so he goes to abuse me, and I, I never forget. He goes, this is what you're going to do. And so he shoves me in this cooler. And I think his thinking was he'll freeze to death, lucid, and I'm trying to talk, and then I'm shaking because I have hypothermia. And just, uh, and to this day, I can't get any type of cold air on the tips of my ears. I wear my, I, man, I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> you were also abused, I believe, by a neighbor, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly. Yeah. Can you go into that as well? Well, I, I, I do believe that when a kid is compromised on just on a psychological level, predators can tell. Mm -hmm. they, they see the signs. You know, absent father, insecure. Um, and I, for me, I was playing. Um, it, again, it was in Mississippi. I was playing by myself, uh, running around the woods. And then I got by the chicken houses. And this neighbor guy comes up and he sees me. And I was making. Country boys, I get it. it. You know, corn cob, you stick feathers, chicken feathers in it, and you throw it, and it really burns down. It's a poor kid's toy, and it's uh, never runs out of batteries, though. And he he caught me there, and he said, "Come here, I want to show you something in this building." And, and it was a small building where they had a ref cooler um, and where they'd put chicken stuff, and and he pulls me in there and. So he goes to abuse me, and I, I never forget. He goes, "This is what you're gonna do," and 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 I just remember, like, I can't, I can't do this anymore. I, I'd rather die today. I, I don't want to be abused anymore. And um, he wasn't right in the head. You could tell he was like inbred. Uh, he, he was because he was an adult child, adult man living with his parents. And and he said, you know, I'll kill you. And I was like, I just don't care at this point. So he actually. How old are you? I was five. Five years old. Yeah. 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 So he shoves me in this cooler. And I think his thinking was he'll freeze to death. Like a freezer? Well, it was a it was a commercial cooler, but I'm in shorts and uh, like a little tank top. Okay. It's it's middle of the summer, but it's early morning, and but again, his mind it's a cooler. Let him die in there. So he you know he shoves me in there. I'm fighting him. He shoves me in there and locks it, and um, and I stayed in there all day. I mean. All day to near the end of the day, and I passed out. And um, and I remember, I remember thinking, and and I, I I really don't say this much, but I do remember there was a figure left of me because I was sitting on these crates, these pallets, a couple of pallets stacked up, and I remember rocking back and forth. I could hear the cooler bl blowing in, just blowing cold. And it was pitch black, but I'll never forget this very felt presence. And it made me calm. And I remember thinking, well, I guess I'm gonna die today. And I, I, I passed out. And I think it was an angel, because um, I do believe angels can manifest themselves who they're called to protect or and um but i'll never forget i felt peace I felt peace I, anger terror all that but the last stage was just i was like wow so I, okay and then i woke up to being carried back they were running to the house um and and i was they, they were uh, they were shaking me and and they actually were screaming at me, saying, "Why did you get in there? You're never supposed to go in there. Why would you?" And 
they looked for me when, when I didn't come home. In the woods, they checked the pond up. They thought maybe I was bit by a snake. Um, and then they found that little toy, that little. And then they went into the thing, and thank God they opened up uh, the, the cooler because they saw somebody had locked it. And thank God they did. So they ran me up and wrapped me in a towel. It took me a while to become lucid, and I'm trying to talk, and then I'm shaking because of hypothermia. And, just, uh, and to this day, I can't get any type of cold air on the tips of my ears. I wear mud. I, man, I'm like, I don't care, <laughs> you know. Um, but I remember them yelling at me, going, what are you doing? Why? I told them I didn't. He, I told him, and my family, and this is what's bizarre, you know, just a handful of guys went to his house. It was right there. Kicked in the screen door. The The dad was real skinny. The mother was super heavy, um, like a bad movie. And uh, they beat him in his house. They beat the fire out of him, drug him outside. The dad never tried to stop him. Um, then they hooked him. They they hog tied him and hooked him behind a tractor and drug him. They drug him behind my mamaw's house. And then they threw a rope over a pecan tree limb and hung him. They tied a noose around his neck, hung him until he passed out, and they cut him down. And they left him there. And um, he didn't die then. But he, he later did die. From that? They they didn't say it was from that. They said it was from a bad heart. So it was interesting. And again, there's some very strange stuff in my story, but it's, you know, in that little group of guys, the oldest was 13. And... You know, later in life, in my 40s, you know, I called him because uh, he's a country cousin. We're not blood related. I called him and talked to him in decades. And I said, hey, uh, and he's a prominent attorney. And he's a good Christian man, but prominent attorney. I said, hey, do you remember when I had to explain? He goes, yeah, have you told anybody about that? I'm like, yeah, it's in a book. I'm coming out with it or whatever. I said, yeah, I'm trying to work through telling my story. He's like, just please don't put my name. He goes, that's... I said, but was I correct? It was just y'all because I wasn't coherent and this is what y'all did? He goes, yeah, that's exactly what happened. I said, like, good night. So, um, yeah, they call that country justice. And later, and I put it in my documentary, I went back to the little cooler building wasn't there, but the concrete slab was. And I stood on it. I had never gone back since I was a kid. And then I found the tree. The pecan tree was still there. And I remember it had a distinct, we call it a hanging limb. It was still there. I couldn't believe it. They filmed it. I was like, holy smokes, man. What did that feel like? It was terrifying and then freeing. It was terrifying because you you just, you remember all the bad things that happened out there. And you still think a monster's going to come out from under a rock or, you, you know, you just, you're just like, dang. But then it was freeing. Um, then you're just grateful. You're grateful that God can redeem the worst types of evil. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.